Yo, Headliner Nation, what's going on? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners, and we've got Mock Draft 3.0 ready to roll for you. As we do here with all of our Mock Drafts, we play out a little bit of a scenario. What could happen if the last Mock Draft I did talked about some of those underappreciated positions? Kind of like offensive tackle. You get sometimes a run on those high skill position guys, some high end caliber guys like wide receiver, and then all of a sudden some of these offensive tackles just are forgotten about. So last video was all about what could happen to the offensive tackle position if that were to play out. This mock draft is all about what I want to happen. If I'm the GM of a team, this is what I want at this current point in time. We've got a few trades in here that I've worked up as well. This isn't necessarily this guy is a definite first round grade or this is who I think they're going to take. This is what I want to see happen. So I just want to make that clear right now. But don't forget, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what pick you don't agree with, but give me a good explanation as to why. Some of you don't seem to understand that and it's okay. I still love you, but come on, come on, let's grow up and let's have a really good conversation about the draft because, hey, one of the most exciting times of the year right now. Also, though, we've expanded Headliner U, our new YouTube channel, College Football 101. We take you in-depth on a lot of these guys. So after you're done listening to this mock draft, make sure you go over to Headliner U, hit that subscribe button because we're giving away a signed Najee Harris football right now over there. Make sure you go check out the latest videos to find all that out. But enough of it. Ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button. Let's jump into my mock draft 3.0. All right, listen, we already know basically how the top of this draft is going to play out. Nothing's really changing here for me. Jacksonville going with Trevor Lawrence at number one. The New York Jets going with Zach Wilson at number two. San Francisco's already made the move up to number three. I still think that's going to be Justin Fields. There is a lot of people that are still thinking Mac Jones goes here. I am not on board with Mac Jones. I think it's Justin Fields. Yeah, they didn't go to Fields Pro Day, but a lot of you may not know that Kyle Shanahan has worked several camps and worked one-on-one -on -one with Justin Fields at those camps since Field was back in high school. He's got plenty of knowledge and upfront access to Justin Fields. He didn't need a pro day to see what he's already seen. I'm not changing my mind there. And if you are down on Justin Fields right now, I just did a video film breakdown of Justin Fields over on Headliner U. So you can go check that out and see exactly what I'm talking about and why this guy is not dropping for me. Just like the last mock draft I did, I've still got the Denver Broncos trading up to number four with Atlanta. Now, listen. A lot of people are saying they'd like to see Carolina move up. I get that. Atlanta is not going to trade with Carolina. So the next best bet for me, I want to see the Denver Broncos move up and take Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance has a huge ceiling. Personally, I think Drew Locke could get another year. They should give it to him anyway. But if they're really looking to jumpstart that offense and get the most of out of it sooner rather than later, Trey Lance is going to be the guy. I've still got them moving up there. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to stay put at 1.05. Yes, people are talking about Jamar Chase. Yes, people are talking about Kyle Pitts. Me personally, if I'm the GM, I am drafting Panay Sewell out of Oregon, the big offensive tackle, to help protect Joe Burrow and to give Joe Mixon more room to run. And then what can you do? You can move former first-round pick Jonah Williams over to right tackle, and now you have a much better offensive line. Do it. Do it, Cincinnati. Miami Dolphins, they moved back, and then they moved back up. They're at number six overall now. I believe that they moved up for Jamar Chase, not for Kyle Pitts. Nothing against Kyle Pitts at all, but they need a wide receiver. They need somebody on the outside to go with Devontae Parker. They already have Mike Gusecki, who is a true receiving tight end. He's exactly like Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is going to be better. Kyle Pitts is more athletic, everything like that. But that's what Kyle Pitts is. Kyle Pitts isn't going to be blocking for anyone. He's going to be receiving. That's what Mike Gusecki is. It does no good to add Kyle Pitts to the mix. Get yourself a true outside wide receiver. 
At number seven, the Detroit Lions, Jalen Waddell. Again, people are saying Kyle Pitts going to the Lions. Don't do it, Lions. Don't even think about it. You have TJ Hawkinson. You need to start building some really good wide receivers after losing basically everybody last year. Jalen Waddell would probably be challenging Jamar Chase as the wide receiver one in this class if it were not for his injury last year. If it were not for his injury last year, there's a pretty good chance that Devonta Smith doesn't win the Heisman because Jalen Waddell sees a lot more action. Jalen Waddell to the Detroit Lions. The dude can do a little bit of everything, stretch the field, plays well, and all of his routes. I'll take him there to the Lions. This is where Kyle Pitts go, 1.08 to the Carolina Panthers. Carolina needs a uh, needs a quarterback, but they've missed out. Their best shot was moving up to where Miami was. That didn't happen. Now that it's not happening, they need to take probably the next best thing that they can do to give Teddy Bridgewater a ton of weapons. You've got Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. You do not have a tight end. Draft Kyle Pitts, and then if Teddy Bridgewater, again, doesn't do it for you this year, go get yourself a quarterback in the draft next season. At number nine, the Atlanta Falcons. Remember, we did a trade here, brought them back after trading with Denver. I'm going to go with Mika Parsons, linebacker out of Penn State, one of their primary needs. You've got Deion Jones there still. That's all right. Parsons can go on the outside. And now you've got yourself two big-time linebackers to stop the run, to get into the backfield. You're really building up that defense a little bit more. You've got plenty of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. If your true scenario for this team is to win now, linebacker does the best thing for you. And number 1.10, I have the Los Angeles Chargers making a trade with the Dallas Cowboys to come up from 1.13 up to 1.10 and get themselves Rashawn Slater out of uh, out of Northwestern. Rashawn Slater is a guy that could challenge Sewell for being the first overall tackle off the board. I don't have it that way, but Slater is a lot closer than what I think people give him credit for. This is a guy that if you watch back over my uh, mock drafts and are under the radar and everything that I've done so far, you will know that I've been on Slater for a few months now and I've really liked his opportunity and I really like his upside. The Chargers need to add an offensive tackle. They need to bring somebody in that can be that offensive tackle, that left tackle for them, protect Justin Herbert, help get the run game going again that's exactly what they need right here with Rashawn Slater make that move and we'll talk more about why Dallas can make that move in just a second the New York Giants okay yeah they could go with offensive tackle they could end up doing it but the two main offensive tackles are already off the board I would like to see them possibly if the Chargers don't move up in front of them and Slater is there then I would go with Slater here to the Giants However, because he's gone with the Chargers with that trade that I've made, next best option for them is the edge one in the draft for me, Jalen Phillips out of Miami. He is a guy that does very well getting to the backfield. He can stop the run. He is a very versatile edge defender. He is the number one edge defender in this class for me right now. The guy can do a little bit of everything. And if you get more pressure on the defensive side of the ball, that defense that you have there becomes absolutely capable of stopping stopping everyone. The one issue that I would say right now about them is they're going to have a hard time creating pressure. Drafting Phillips will help them do that and will make this team very scary this season. At number 1.12, the Philadelphia Eagles who have traded back with Miami, they are going to pick up last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Devonta Smith out of Alabama. Absolutely needed. The Eagles need some playmakers. And we're going to talk a little bit more about other players here in a little bit and why it could really help with Devonta Smith. I'll talk to you more about that in a little bit. But Devonta Smith, a good pick here for Philadelphia. Dallas at 1.13. Again, they just traded back with Los Angeles in my mock draft, going with Patrick Sertain, the second out of Alabama. I think this is a good move for them because they know if they trade back, more than likely Sertain is still going to be there. So they get a little bit of extra draft capital, only drop back three spots, and they're still going to get the number one position of need on their board. Their defense couldn't stop anybody last year. They're going to need to stop somebody this year. Minnesota Vikings at 14 overall. I am going with Elijah Vera Tucker, 
interior offensive lineman out of USC. Now, Kristen Darsaw is still on the board here. Might be a little bit highly, uh, higher ranked overall than what Elijah Vera Tucker is. But for me, Vera Tucker is a little bit better of a fit. You know that the Vikings are going to want to run the football and they need to be able to do it through the tackles a little bit better than what we have seen. We know that they've got Dalvin Cook, who's absolutely explosive, that can get to the outside and beat anybody. But we need to be a little bit better in between the tackles as well. And Elijah Vera Tucker is going to be very, very good at that. And not only that, he's a very athletic and gifted interior offensive lineman. So if you're going to be running any type of plays that require your guard to pull and get out in front of your running back, he is going to be able to do that. That's why I think it's a better fit than what Darasau is. The New England Patriots don't need to make a move. I played around with a couple of scenarios here, but I think they're going to end up staying right here. The only team that worries me about potentially drafting Mac Jones ahead of them are the Chicago Bears. And I played around with a couple of things there with the Bears as well, but I just didn't see a fit in this mock where the Bears could get up in front of the Patriots. That's going to allow Mac Jones to fall to them, and he's going to be their quarterback of the future. Go ahead and roll with Mac Jones there. The Indianapolis Colts are moving up from 21 overall to 16 overall, switching with the Arizona Cardinals. Christian Darsau, offensive tackle out of Virginia Tech. Indianapolis obviously has lost a couple of offensive linemen. This was an offensive line that was very, very good. One of the best in the league over the last few years. There's been some talk about, oh, you can just make some changes and, and move some guy around. Don't. Don't. Leave things as is and go get an offensive tackle like Christian Darasal that is going to be a guy that can come in and become a franchise offensive left tackle. This is where they go. They move up to make sure that they get that done so they can keep so they can keep newly acquired Carson Wentz healthy and give him plenty of time to throw to the weapons around him. I did have a wide receiver going here earlier in my mock drafts. However, with T.Y. Hilton being back, I think maybe they wait and make another pick at the wide receiver position and get their offensive tackle. Now, at 17 overall, I've got Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle out of Michigan, going to the Las Vegas Raiders. And Mayfield fits exactly what the Raiders have done over the last couple of years. Over the last couple of years, they have drafted guys that, hey, maybe they're not going to be the guy right away, but they are going to be someone with a lot of high-end upside, and that's what they've done. They've opted to go with some guys that, yeah, they might be seem, seem to go a little bit earlier in the draft, but they're high-end guys that the uh, Raiders fully believe can turn into stars in the NFL. Jalen Mayfield fits that projection. Now, I've had a couple of people tell, tell me there's no way Mayfield is a first-round pick. If you don't think Jalen Mayfield is a first-round pick, you have watched absolutely no film whatsoever, and I 100% guarantee it. So if you say anything else down in the chat other than that, I'm going to tell you right now, your nose is growing. You're a liar. You're a liar, okay? Jalen Mayfield has absolutely phenomenal film, especially against last year's first overall pick, Chase Young. Yes, this is a guy, not first overall pick, second overall pick, excuse me, second overall pick, Chase Young. This is a guy Jalen Mayfield went up against when Chase Young was still at Ohio State, and Jalen Mayfield absolutely held his own. The only problem with Mayfield is he just doesn't have a ton of tape because he's had some injuries. But the tape he does have is phenomenal, and if he would have played that entire time and wouldn't have dealt with some injuries, he would be a locked-in-stone first-round pick. At number 18, the Miami Dolphins. This one I'm kind of conflicted with. I'm going with Najee Harris here. I like Najee Harris, and I think adding him to this backfield really could help boost this offense a little bit. But I like Miles Gaskin as well. I'm a Miles Gaskin truther. Back when he was drafted out of Washington, I really liked him, and I would love to see him get the opportunity. Part of me was thinking maybe going edge here, but Phillips was the guy that I originally had going here with some of the trades and some of the things that I reworked then. He's bumped up a little bit. I mean, you could go with another wide receiver here if you really wanted to, but I don't think that that's necessary at this point in the draft. You don't really need a tight end. You could go with somebody on the interior offensive line, but 
with Elijah Vera Tucker already off the field, um, that uh, already off the board, that doesn't really make a lot of sense because there's no other top offensive lineman. So at this point right now, with everything that's left over, it's Najee Harris for me. Really going to help keep the pressure off Tua and give a respectable run game, maybe something that has a little bit more upside to it. So Tua uh, can deal with a little bit more open field when they try to stack the box a little bit more often. The Washington football team at 1.19. Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa off out of Notre Dame. Okay, JOK as I refer to him. One of the most athletic, gifted players on the defensive side of the ball in this draft. A great pick here for Washington to make. Absolutely love this. The one thing we know about Washington is they are going to be able to get after the quarterback. But they don't really have that guy that can play in the middle of the field and kind of spread it all over the place. You're sending a lot of guys to the backfield, but bringing in a guy like JOK is really going to help solidify the middle of the defensive field. He's going to be able to be in coverage if he needs to be, track down any type of running backs after they find a hole, any swing routes to the outside, screens to avoid the pressure. JOK is the perfect fit for that. The Chicago Bears at 20th overall. They end up missing out on their quarterback in this draft. Let's get another weapon for Andy Dalton. Kadarius Toney, wide receiver out of Florida. This is a little bit higher than what I think he's going to go. For me, Kadarius Toney's got more of like a second round grade on him. But I really like this fit for the Chicago Bears. And like I said, this is my this is my wish list of where I would like to see guys go. Kadarius Toney, wide receiver out of Florida, would absolutely fit into the slot here in Chicago. Obviously, you have Allen Robinson on one side. You've got on the other side, listen, let's talk about Anthony Miller for a second, okay? Anthony Miller, uh, I like Anthony Miller, but he's not used the way that he should be, okay? So Anthony Miller, there's been some talk about him out the door anyway. He could potentially be traded. Kadarius Toney is a much better athlete than what Anthony Miller is, okay? When you've got guys on the outside that can stretch the field a little bit, you've got Allen Robinson, you're going to have David Montgomery, obviously. Cole Komet is a guy that's going to probably take a step forward this year. Kadarius Toney, an athlete, he's got some sick tape. He doesn't have the best like overall tape in the world, but the plays that he does have on tape are absolutely phenomenal. Love it. He is a guy that's going to have some room over the middle of the field to roam, and when he does, he is going to make some big plays for Andy Dalton. The Arizona Cardinals, who traded back with Indianapolis. Caleb Farley, cornerback out of Virginia Tech. Caleb Farley is a guy that should be the cornerback one in this draft, but he's not. Offseason back surgery should be fine for training camp. It's going to cause his draft stock to just slide a little bit. The Arizona Cardinals are going to get themselves the position that they absolutely need right here, even after trading back. The Tennessee Titans. I'd like to see the Tennessee Titans take a wide receiver. But if they want to make a run to the postseason again, they are going to have to stop people better than what they did last year. And J.C. Horn, cornerback out of South Carolina, is absolutely going to do that for them. They need to stop the pass. They need to limit players. J.C. Horn, a guy that's on the rise right now, going here towards the mid to end of the first round to Tennessee to help their defense stop the pass a little bit more often. The New York Jets at 1.23 would love to see a running back go here, but a running back is probably going to be available to them in the early second round anyway. There's no sense in spending the pick here when you can get it later on. Let me see Zaven Collins, linebacker out of Tulsa, go to the Jets. The Jets need a little bit of help all over the place. They need a little bit of everything, okay? Zaven Collins can come in and help in that linebacker position. They really need some help on the defensive side of the ball. They're going to be better on the defensive side of the ball this year but out there in the east okay they're gonna have to stop some teams now Zayvon Collins is gonna help them do that the Pittsburgh Steelers another team that could use a running back but can probably try to get him in the second round anyway Tevin Jenkins offensive tackle out of Oklahoma State Pittsburgh needs to help reinforce that offensive line a little bit better they've lost some guys Ben isn't getting any younger last year what their game plan was was really, hey, let's get the ball out really, really quick. 
They're going to have to get the ball out even quicker this year if they don't work on the offensive line. Let's bring in Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. This is a guy has dealt with an injury in the past, but he is a high motor, high intensity guy that plays through the whistle, never gives up, and is exactly what the Steel City signifies when you see those guys walk out on the field. He is a perfect fit there. The Jacksonville Jaguars at 25 overall. You've added your future quarterback, right? Let's protect him with Dylan Radoon's offensive tackle out of North Dakota State. Absolutely love Radoon's. Again, just like Jenkins, high motor, high intensity, is going to play through the final whistle. He's a really good pa uh, run protector as well. He is a guy that does uh, just mauls any defensive lineman that comes into him, really opens up, helps to open up gaps but he is a guy as well that can help protect the quarterback and give some time to guys like DJ Chark and Marvin Jones kid to get open down the field. The Cleveland Browns, they need an edge rusher on the other side of Miles Garrett. Quiddy Pay, edge rusher out of Michigan, is absolutely going to help there. He might be a little bit of a project. I mean, he's not nearly a project like some other guys are, but Quiddy Pay is a guy that if he learns from Miles Garrett, those two guys on either side of the offense or defensive line are going to cause some problems for a long time. And if you put, if you're going to be double teaming Miles Garrett, you're not going to be able to double team Pay, and it's going to give him a lot of one on one opportunities to win, which is what you want. The Baltimore Ravens at 27 overall, Aziz Ojolari, edge rusher out of Georgia. This guy's got to, he's kind of dropping a little bit, and I don't think it's necessarily any issues on his part. I just think he's kind of getting lost. For me, Aziz Ojolari is a safe prospect. He might not really like pop off the tape to you. He's not a guy that might have as much upside, but he's going to do a lot of things right. And he's exactly what Baltimore needs to help reinforce after losing a guy like Matt Judon. Bringing in Aziz Ojulari out of Georgia is going to help them reinforce that defense a little bit. Kind of just like I said with Ojulari, Greg Newsome to the New Orleans Saints at 28 overall. They need a quarter a cornerback. They need to stop the pass. They need to reinforce that defense. Newsome is a guy that, yeah, doesn't pop off the tape, okay? He's not a guy that's going to put together these crazy highlight films, but he does so many things right. It's some of the things that, that are just underappreciated. NFL scouts see these things, but those of you out there who don't really watch tape or don't really spend the time grinding away looking at those things, those things are kind of missed, and those are the things Greg Newsome does very, very well. He does the small things well. He is a very good player. He's not going to be a superstar. He's going to be a guy that gets lost in the shuffle. Why? Because he just does everything right, and he's quiet about it. That's what Greg Newsome's going to be. Fits in perfectly with the Saints. The Green Bay Packers. We've been begging them to get some help for Aaron Rodgers for a while now. And I'm going to go ahead and give him some help. I'll take over in Green Bay. Packers fans, if you need help, make me GM. I'll get you that help. Terrence Marshall or Terrace Marshall, junior wide receiver out of LSU. I've got a first round grade on him. He's overshadowed by Jamar Chase, overshadowed by Justin Jefferson the year before. This is a guy that can be a wide receiver one in the NFL. He's got the speed. He's got the length. He's got everything that you need. He's got the good route tree. He would be a perfect complement on the other side of Devontae Adams. Buffalo Bills at 30 overall. Christian Barmore, interior defensive lineman out of Alabama. Barmore might end up being more of a early day two player for me or early round two player for me. But here's the thing about Buffalo. They've got to stop the run. They absolutely need to. It was one of their issues last year, and putting Barmore there in the middle of the defensive line is going to help stuff that up. It's going to make guys go to the outside because they're not going to have a whole lot of room in the middle, and it's going to give some of that speed on defense a chance to catch them down before big plays happen. That's what Christian Barmore does for the Buffalo Bills. Kansas City Chiefs. Baron Browning, linebacker out of Ohio State. He's creeping up draft boards. He's getting much higher. He is the guy that I really liked. I thought he was going to be an absolute fabulous steal in round two of the draft. 
that's probably not going to happen anymore. This is a guy that's going to end up probably creeping up into the late first round, very early second round. He's going to go off the board. A great player, fantastic player that's just been overshadowed by a lot of the really good players that Ohio State churns out every single year. And to wrap up Mock Draft 3.0, the Philadelphia Eagles, I've got them trading back into the first round with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, there's not really going to be anyone here that they're like, man, we got to get this guy. Trade back a little bit. The Eagles are going to come back into the first round, and they are going to add another wide receiver. Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota, and now they've used those two picks in the first round to bring in offensive weapons. You used one on Jalen Rager last year. I'm still a Jalen Rager fan. This guy is going to be really, really good. But now you've brought in Devonta Smith in this draft as well and Rashad Bateman. Okay, now the thing is, is you don't have any true like alpha wide receiver ones here, but you have a lot of guys with versatility that can win all over the field with their speed. This is going to allow you to spread the ball around. That is what is going to be best for Jalen Hurts. I feel like these guys will absolutely fit that well. You're going to have still Dallas Goddard there that can win over the middle of the field. And you've got Miles Sanders. Now you've got Jalen Hurts, a ton of weapons. And you know what? If Jalen Hurts doesn't work out and they're still thinking that he's not the quarterback of the future, then you've got those extra first round picks coming up over the next couple of years. Now you can use those to trade up. You can trade for a guy like Deshaun Watson if that ends up becoming something that is relevant again over the next year. Whatever it may be, you're going to set yourself up in a position to really pull out that QB trade or draft pick if that's what you end up needing instead of Hurts. There you have it, Headliner Nation. Mock Draft 3.0 in the books, done, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm your... Oh, sorry, got off got off track there a little bit but that's all right ladies and gentlemen do me a favor if you appreciate that content you gotta hit that like button for me ladies and gentlemen really appreciate it does wonders here on youtube if you're new here to the fantasy headliner subscribe hit that subscribe button become a part of headliner nation today let us know down in the comments if you are new so we can welcome you and then as always like i mentioned at the beginning of the video if you don't agree with something let me know but back it up I want to hear some facts. I want to hear you give me a solid argument as to why you don't think a pick is right. If you don't like it, that's fine. But if you don't give me any reason to have a back and forth, a little bit of debate with you, then what's the point? Saying, Kyle, you suck. That doesn't do any good, right? Get that out of here. Get me some good content to work back and forth with you. And who knows? Maybe I'll do a video soon on some of the best responses to my mock draft and what other people, uh, other people think. And then maybe I'll break down on why I don't agree with that. Might be a good segment here coming up, coming up really soon. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. Appreciate you tuning in to this video. Everybody out there, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.